Hey everybody. Here is that Delta Wonder from an e-machine. This computer over here is formatting the hard drive. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe it has some bad sectors on it because you hear the repetitive noise it's making. But anyways, with this power supply here, this come out of a recent part system I got at the QWork store. And it was only $14.99 because it would not start doing anything. And I believe they thought that the motherboard was bad. Turns out the motherboard was just fine, but this power supply here is completely dead. It doesn't even put out any, it doesn't even put out file standby power when you plug it in. This power supply is in, bad, in very bad condition. And the reason why I call this a Delta Wonder is because, listen, this sounds like some $20 power supply, or no, excuse me, $15 to $10 power supply off a of new egg. Some real cheap, like, Cool Max or, I don't know, Log is his power supply off a new egg. It don't sound like a Delta. So anyways, um, I let this power supply sit for nearly a week because it didn't do anything at all. And the reason why I did, did that is because you got to be careful with power supplies because they can store primary voltage in them in the primary capacitors especially when in a scenario like this where you're getting no power at all on the output now there's a possibility this thing may have a blown fuse in it and usually when there's a blown fuse you're pretty much it's pretty much done so let's go ahead and open up this wonder and see what's going on with it see if there's anything noticeable in it And of course, when I get the cover off, I'm going to check around the multimeter and make sure there's no stored voltage in it. And I can't stress enough, you got to be careful. And I don't mention this very much in some of my videos about power supplies, but there is a hidden danger in them. So anytime you see me open a power supply up, it's not right it's been plugged into a computer. It's been sitting for at least a day. Okay, I just got the cover loose, and let's have a look inside this thing. I've already checked it with a multimeter, and there is no charge left in the power supply. So it's safe to look in and mess with. I've also checked the fuse, and it is showing continuity, so the fuse is good. But, this is the reason why I call this a Delta Wonder from the E-Machines. Because, normally Delta power supplies are built very well. Here's a Delta from another E-Machine, an older one, from 2005. Notice how well this is built. You notice there's huge inductors on the secondary output side. The, ca the caps on the output side are all LTEC, I believe. Got this, uh, well, I believe it's called a pie filter, or you can just call it an inductor. It's got nice thick windings on it. You can see them in, in between the two heat sinks. Everything here looks really good. This one is, I believe, a two transistor 5 volt standby unit, though. But I'm sure it does have the proper protections in place. You just have a closer look here. The transformer looks a lot bigger on this one. At least I believe, anyway, there's a transformer back there. This power supply does have higher outputs too, the, in terms of amp outputs, it can put out more than the one we're about to look at. And by the way, here's a look at that spec label. I, for, I forgot to do that earlier, so anyways, here's your spec label. Pause and use specs. Okay. So you, you can see here that this power supply is also a bit more heavy on the 5 volt and 3.3 volt rails. The 12 volt rail only has 15 amps on it. That's pretty much equivalent to a Pastec ATX 312E. And now that you've had a good look at this power supply, notice the large inductors and everything. Let's swing over to the other one and have a look at it. And I, and I'm, I did a nice little tap on the case earlier, and you could tell it's a very cheaply made case. And it only gets worse from there, as I could say. Or better, if you want to call it better. But, um, let's have a look here. 
there is some discoloration, a slight bit of discoloration near the 5 volt standby transformer. And of course, that right there is caused by heat from the diode and that resistor next to it. Those two components put out a lot of heat. And this little ways over next next to that little disc capacitor is a Zener diode. This power supply is also a two transistor design unit. It seems like the only power supplies in um, e machines that are not two transistor are the Best Tech ATX 312E and maybe a few others out there. We definitely know the Best Tech ATX 25012E is not. I mean, it's, it's two transistor design because it has killed so many motherboards. But if you look here, the inductors on this unit are much poor. I mean, are much worse than those on this one here. You can see that the inductors on this unit are very large, and there's many of them. I mean, of course, including those two big ones here. There's you got extra inductors around the capa capacitors. And I believe those are called pi filters. This one has. Um, I see a very tiny pi filter down there next to one of the caps. Very thin gauge wire on it too. The 3.3 volt inductor is very poor. No, no one. I mean, when you compare it to this, and I believe this this inductor here has more than just one output on it because there's different color wires on it. And on this one, the back the back inductor is of course for your remaining rails. The caps in this unit are not as good quality as ones in this one. I mean, there are some l in this one, but there are also some cap zones in there. And, and of course, as we all know, you can't trust cap zone because, obviously, my monitor over there, which I got the video kind of blurred for a reason, my Westinghouse L2046MV, the power supply in it started acting up, and it has all, it had all cap zone caps in it before I recapped it. And that's a Delta power supply in that thing, by the way, too. And... Get you a closer look here at um, the middle of the unit in between the primary and secondary heat sinks. Notice the transformer back there is not quite as big. One well, might be about the same size, can't quite tell for sure, as this one here. Now, surprisingly, on this one, this unit has um, higher higher capacity capacitors. These are 680 microfarad. Samp zones and this one here has 560 microfarad cap zones. Now cap zones on the primary side, you don't have to worry about them. Usually those are fine. It's just their secondary caps that have problems. Now if we look here at the primary side of these units. They're just about identical. The primary side of this power supply is built per um, very well, I would say. Good size primary caps. There's your main switcher there. Um, can't quite tell what the rating is on it. There's that switcher. There's two MFVs right there next to the switcher. Those, that's your surge protection. We have a Y cap back here. And we have four Y capacitors up here. That's very good. Normally, um, well at least the standard specifies a minimum of two up here and one back here. This has four up here and one back here. And there's actually two more on the so on the um, socket, the AC socket up here. And <clears throat> let's just have a look here. Good quality inductors on the. Well, actually, these are, you can consider these chokes or long filters on the EMI filtering stage. There's two of them there, but there is not. It's not as well. Actually, no, it's the same as this one. About the same as this one here. Of course, there's your Delta logo. If you can't see it already, it is located right there. Delta should be ashamed of themselves for putting their name on something like this. With really thin casing, poor quality design. I mean, the thing doesn't work anymore. Though surprisingly, no, the caps have failed. All the caps are not bulging at all. The, the tops are completely flat. So, the caps, you can pretty much rule them out as a problem. Something else has caused a problem inside this power supply. Now, I'm not really, I'm not really bothered with trying to fix this, this unit because this is such a mystery problem, and of course the quality of this power supply is not that good. So I'm just gonna part it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the good quality caps. I'm gonna pull out the inductors and probably the bridge rectifier, the Y caps. 
so on and so forth, and the primary capacitors too. In the casing, while it is cheap and flimsy, it is reusable. But for let's say if I get a power supply board that has a torn up case or something, I could reuse this to house another power supply unit. But notice here, on this power supply, the only thing I see that is actually, um, I believe is actually 20 gauge, I mean 18 gauge, excuse me, is the 3.3 volt wires. No, they are the only thick ones there. The rest of it is all 20 gauge. Now, most e machine power supplies out there, well, actually, all of them, I believe. No, I, I, I'll say most because this one here has good quality wires on the CPU power connector. But most e machine power supplies have 20 gauge wires on their 4 pin CPU connector. The best techs and this Delta. That Delta has 18 gauge. I believe at least 18 gauge. But look at this. Really thin wires here on this 20 pin connector. Look at the wires on this connector. Now I believe there are a couple of 20 gauge wires on this one. Or at least there is for the 3.3 volt sense. Which I'm not sure if that's a genuine connector, I mean, a genuine sense wire or not. But most of everything on this connector, I mean, usually the, at least the critical rails are 18 gauge. All of this is 20 gauge. You can just feel by the wire how much lighter the wire is and the easier it is to bend. I mean, all the wires are like this. And of course, there's those thicker 2.3 volt wires right here, but the rest of it's all 20 gauge. So yeah, just so you know, if you have an e-machines computer, a newer one, and it has a Delta power supply in it that looks like this, normally you'd say, oh, it's a Delta, I ain't got nothing to worry about, but I can't really say that for sure because of the build design on this one. It's not that great. I mean, it's not that bad, but it's not that great. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask, and thanks for watching.